Hi, I'm Vicky from Liberator. We provide augmentative and alternative communication devices for non-verbal individuals who are unable to communicate naturally. I love you. Our AAC devices can be accessed through touch, switches, joysticks, head pointing and eye gaze. How are you today? I feel great. In addition to free consultations, Liberator offer free trials of equipment and a wide range of AAC training. Our high-tech communication aids come with a three-year warranty with accidental damage cover giving you complete peace of mind. We believe that everyone deserves a voice and look forward to helping you along your communication journey. So hello and welcome to Accent Device Training. My name is Mark Street and we're going to go through Easy Chat Core on the Accent Device. So my contact details are here should you need to contact me, mark at liberator.co.uk my mobile number 07747 You'll be able to go to Liberator Limited, find us on Facebook. There's a range of YouTube videos. On our website, we have a range of product support videos, and we also do meetings via Skype, Teams, Zoom, GoToWebinar. So do look us up or contact us should you need any further information. During the time of COVID, we are still operating business as normal. We're just not doing face-to-face -face appointments right now. But you can contact us and we will do consultations and assessment support online, remotely. We'll do remote support connection where we go into your device. We offer free trials, free loads of devices, training and support, and that's all done online or over the phone. If you want more information on a range of training courses that we offer at Liberator, go to our website, liberator.co.uk, and you can click on training and for all the um, trainings that you attend, you will get a certificate of attendance. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just share my screen with you so you can in fact see the accent device. There we go, you should now be seeing the accent device. I'm just gonna stop my share and hopefully in a second, you'll be able to get a full view of that screen. There it is. And I'll just move that over and hopefully you can still see it. There it is. Excellent. Okay. So you'll see here that I'm currently showing my accent communication device. Now I am using computer emulation software, which means I'm showing you this on the computer. However, I do have a device here that I'm going to share with you and show to you. So at the moment, there is the Accent 1000 device. That noise you hear is in fact the battery alarm, worth knowing about that. To turn the device on, press the power button on the top here. And to charge the device, there is a charger socket indicated by charger on here. You've got a volume button that turns the volume up and down via the side and as you'll see on the display where my cursor is showing you've got a battery indicator and volume controls as well. So I'm going to plug that device back in, you can plug it in and use it at the same time. Um, I'm going to share with you how we do some editing and programming. There's a few buttons that I'd like to share with you first, there are several different ways to program Personally, I prefer to plug in a USB mouse because when I plug a mouse in, I can use the mouse on screen and I can right click with a button and either edit, cut, copy or paste. Personally, I find that a lot easier. So you should be supplied with a USB mouse or you can plug any USB mouse into the device. If you don't have a USB mouse, you can in fact press the home button or the menu button. On the device itself, the home button or the menu button is this white square here at the bottom, or as you can see on my screen at the moment, it is in fact this cog wheel. They both do exactly the same function. When I press the home button or the menu button, 
it comes up with these choices, toolbox, wizard, setup or edit setup, easy setup, word finder, support and win easy chat. This toggles here between Windows and the main screen. So the idea behind that is you can connect the device to the internet by going into Win Easy Chat. The support button, once you have it connected to the internet, allows us to connect to the device remotely should you have any problems. Word Finder, that allows you to search for any words in the device. And Edit Setup is mainly used for customization. Toolbox goes into the main toolbox of the device, which may look a bit complicated to begin with, but if you do find yourself in this screen and want to return to the home screen, just press this blue button, go to home. You'll notice a few things. The device is currently showing as charging and as full charge. If I remove the charger, this will show a red, yellow and green indicator showing the charge of the device. This is the volume button on the device, and as I increase the volume on the side of the device, or if I go into the apps button and increase the volume this way, you'll see that the volume indicator does increase and decrease accordingly. This button here, or this uh, volume indicator here, is for headphone controls. I'm now gonna press the home button that goes back to the main screen. So if I want to do some customization, it's very unlikely that I will need to customize on what we call the home screen. The home screen is set up in a specific way, so it interacts with all the other vocabulary. Some of the places that you may in fact need to customize almost straight away would in fact be the names pages, and this can be found under people. If I go into the people page by clicking it, either pressing it or selecting the left mouse click, that will go into my people page here. And you'll see that I've got family, friends and names. I'm gonna click on names here. And when I go into that page, if I'm using a mouse, I can simply right click and edit to add a new name. It takes me to this screen. If I select add message or insert tool, I can then type the name of the person which I want to add. If I want a capital letter, I can just press the shift once and then type my name, Mark. I must always put a space at the end of the letter or word that I've last written. So here I'm just pressing a space and I'm gonna press okay. This now says message to speak is in fact Mark, but this is how my button will look. If I want to put a picture of Mark in there, I've got several options. The first option is change picture. And then I can just go in and search for icon or search for a picture. Now, obviously there won't be a picture of Mark in there, but what I can do is go spell icon to find and just type in man and press okay. This will allow me to choose any picture I want to. I'll select this picture here. And now it says, this is how my button will look. Here's the word mark, and this is a label, just to indicate what the message says. I can change that. And I can in fact change the button color. My other option is I can go into change picture, and I can in fact say, take a picture. And this will go to the camera. Now, because I'm showing you as I am on my computer, this isn't going to allow me to take the picture. But here I could choose the front or the back camera, and I could take a picture of the person. Make sure you get nice and close to the face because you actually want to see somebody's face on the picture. If it's a head or shoulder view, then it may look a bit small when you go and view the picture at a later date. Here I'm just gonna press OK. And I'm going to go back to change picture, spell icon to find, type in boy or man, choose a picture that I'm looking for. And once I'm finished adding that word in, I'm simply going to press OK. So that was using the mouse and look how Mark has been added in. Mark, there you go. 
If I want to add another name in there, so I'm gonna go back into people, back into names, and this time I'm gonna press the menu button or home button to add a word in. I'm gonna select edit setup, and then I'm gonna press this blank button here. And with that, what I'm going to do is select add message or insert tool. So this is another way of doing it without the USB mouse plugged in. So add message, and this time I will type in Ian. I'll select the space button. Again, remembering your space after the last word. Press OK. Change the picture. And remember, you can either take a picture or spell icon to find. I'll type in man. Press OK. And I can search for a picture of a man for Ian. And then I can select OK again. And there you go. When I go into people and names, that's added Ian and myself in two different ways. The first way was right clicking and using edit that allows me to go straight into the button and use my mouse. If I don't have a mouse, it allows me to press the menu or home button, select edit setup, select the button in which I wish to edit, type or select add message or insert tool. There is no limit as to how much text I can put in here. I could put my name is Mark. Remember my space, press OK. I can change the picture. I can put any picture I want in here. I'm gonna type in name. There I'm just gonna put a, a name label. Notice it says my name and it's a letter I. That's because it's taking the text from here. So I can select change label and type in Mark. What that means is that the label just says Mark, the message says my name is Mark when pressed, and that's because I changed the label. If I want to change the button color, I can go in and choose from any one of these colors. Be careful if doing this because it can look very busy when you're putting lots of colors onto one page. If you want to go and continue to edit a button in the same page, then you can simply select edit another button. This allows you to continue editing in the same names page. So I'll go edit another button and it will say, choose a button to edit. I'll select this one here. I'll select add a message and I'll type in Mick. If I make a mistake, I can simply hit backspace. If I remember, if I wanted a capital letter, I can simply hit shift. My A is now flashing here and I can type in a surname. And once I've used that capital letter, it will drop and go back to lowercase. Remember my space, press OK, and again, choose a picture. Here, I'm gonna look for another picture of another man. Press OK. And now I'm gonna choose a picture of Mick. There he is. And again, if I want to, I can change the label and it can say Mikola, which is his real name. Press OK, and here it's just a label that says Mikola, but yet here it says Mick Davis. So this will speak out the word Mick Davis. If you decide you want to swap a button on the same page, you can choose swap button location, and you can move this button here to this button here, and it swaps them over, or this button back to this button here. When you finish swapping, select the text area here, and that will cancel out, and then select OK to finish. So that's the basic editing of the EasyChat core vocabulary. Some other things that I'd like to show you, if you have writing on screen, so if I'm gonna build a sentence, I want to eat, when I select eat, I've got a choice of accessing some high frequency foods here, banana or chocolate. If I select chocolate, it will simply close down and go to the main screen again. And I can press this area here and it will speak the message out loud. 
if I'm building a sentence, I want eat, and again, I've got them to eat, and I don't want banana or chocolate, I can go into food, and I can choose any one of these foods. Remember, just like you did in the names, you can add any food into that page. Once you're there on the page, you can edit and add food or any other word in there. Here I'm gonna select pizza. And there I've said, I want to eat pizza. To clear my screen, I'm gonna press this clear button once, and I've got some choices. I can delete the word, the last word, so here, pizza, or I can delete character, so it deletes each character, or I can undo my deletion, there, and that will undo and give you the word pizza back, or I can press this button twice and that will clear the screen. Remember at the beginning, we talked about the apps button. Here in the apps button, we've got lots of useful features. We can connect a mobile phone in, and we can answer and end a call. We can send and receive a text message. You will need to set the device up to do that. And therefore, I suggest you contact Liberator on 01733 370470 or go to our website and look under product support for a video of how to connect your mobile phone. For best results and to use text messaging, you will need to use an Android mobile phone and you will need to download a specialist app called AeroText, which is available from our website. On this particular vocabulary program, I've got a data logging button. If you're using data logging, when I turn this on, what will happen is you'll see this chart turns white. That means that the device is now capturing data or words that the device is speaking and is recording that. If I turn data logging off, that little chart there now goes black, which means I'm no longer capturing data. If you're modeling vocabulary for somebody, my advice would be to turn data logging off. So for example, if I was showing somebody how to use the device and say, I like it, I don't want that data to record. Now, if they're starting to use the device themselves, I can go back into apps, and turn data logging back on. And what that will do is allow us to record the data and share that data with any speech therapist or any professional that has access to that software. So now that chart is white, it's simply indicating that data logging is active. Notice this speech bubble is white as well. What this means is whenever the device is switched on, if this is white, it's going to speak each word as I press it. If I don't want that to be the case, I can use the more items button and press speech on off. Notice it's now black. What that means in order for the device to speak, I have to select the text area to talk. So I build my sentence and I press this button here. If I want to bring speech on for every word, simply select more, and turn speech on off. Notice the speech bubble is now white. It might be useful for you to create a lock code using a USB stick. What this does is prevents anyone getting into the device accidentally. To do that, you'll need a USB stick. Don't put the stick into the device just yet. Press the menu button and select toolbox. Select Advanced Settings and select System Lock Settings. What you'll now need to do is to turn System Lock on and select USB. Now select Create USB Lock Override and when you do that it tells you to insert the USB stick to use. Let's imagine I've done that. Once I've done that I can now select to disable certain buttons and I can choose which buttons I wish to disable. I in fact do want to disable the on-screen tools key. I also want to disable this tools key as well. So just ensure this is set to disable and this is set to disable and this is set to disable. These will become options when you've got the USB plugged in. 
as long as toolbox restrictions is turned on, what that means is, and I'm going to turn mine off for this exercise, but as long as that is turned on, what that means is that when I remove the USB stick, this menu button and the one that I showed you earlier on the device here will not be accessible. So that white menu button there will not be accessible and will not allow you to go in and do any customization on the device. That's very useful if you're leaving somebody with the device. Another useful feature you might want to look at is the spelling. In the device here, I can press the spelling board and it goes into a QWERTY keyboard. Here, I've got a QWERTY uppercase keyboard. Now that's fairly standard and my recommendation would be to leave it as a QWERTY keyboard. However, if you want to change the keyboard, there are a choice of keyboards and you get these by going into menu, easy setup, selecting keyboard, and then choosing the keyboard you want to use. You can view different keyboards. Notice these are more advanced keyboards, which means it has word prediction and abbreviation expansion. They are ABC format in gray, white, or yellow, or QWERTY format, which is standard keyboard layout, gray, white, and yellow. You can have lowercase keyboards by pressing lowercase, and again, gray, white, or yellow in ABC or QWERTY. And you simply select apply to the one that you want. And when you go back into spell, that will then give you a QWERTY keyboard in that color that you chose. So I'm now going to change mine back using easy setup, keyboards. I'm going to select white QWERTY and apply. And there you go, the keyboard is back to standard. If, you're, if you are spelling, then there is a useful feature within this keyboard. Notice if I add a word into the device. I'm going to hit the shift key and I'm going to type in the word Oliver. Now you'll see Oliver is stored in the device already. Let me try and store another word. I'm going to store the word Davis. And Davis is stored in there. Okay, I'm going to try and store another word. Let's try the word Minogue. Okay, so Minogue isn't stored in the device in word prediction. We have a useful feature that allows us to add a word in automatically. Here, if I press add WP or the word plus button, what that will do is copy the word Minogue, say, do you want to cancel it? If you do, select okay. And now in future, that word is available in word prediction. This is extremely useful for adding place names and people names. In there also, you will find a word finder. If I press the word finder button and type the word go and select OK, this will show me where go can be stored on the device or where it is stored on the device. Here, that's showing the home screen and here it's showing by pressing topics, places, the word go is there. If I select this and say show me, it will show me. And likewise, if I press this and show me, it will show me where that word can be found. And there it is. When you are using the device to speak, you'll notice as I start to build a sentence, I'm going to say I want to go out. I want to go. And notice how some high frequency words have appeared here. I want to go toilet, there, or out, and I can select these. I can say, do you want to go out? And very quickly, I'm able to build the sentence up. You may see buttons flashing here, and what they are telling me are the buttons that I've pressed. It's worth exploring EasyChat Core, and be sure you're confident with the layout and the vocabulary. Notice we have some social words down here. Words like hello and goodbye. We have our positional words, in, on, and all the positional words. When you select one of these words, it automatically closes down. 
I've also got question words. And when I select a question word, it comes up with the question words option here. What? And notice it also gives me the option to plural. What? Here I've got this, that, these and those. And that comes up here. That. Little words also come up as well. There we go. And we've also got access to nouns. There's lots of different topic based vocabulary in here as well. I can select topics and I've got a choice of high frequency popular topics, all of which can be customized and edited. There are in fact extra pages here that can all be customized and edited too. Here at the bottom, there are some high frequency phrases like asking you to please charge my device. Here I can go in and make some sounds laughing or crying and by selecting more I've got some extra pages and the ability to add pre-stored messages. We do have one hit core boards as an option which you can download from our website. Go to our website www.liberator.co.uk and select manual boards. The manual boards will allow you to download the manual board relevant to the vocabulary. We have a selection for symbol sticks, widget, and easy chat, as well as PCS board maker. So that's a general view or overview of the easy chat core vocabulary. You can go into the toolbox of the device and in there you can adjust the volume. You can turn the speech on and off just like we did before. You can, in fact, set the device to sleep and you can clear the display. But these aren't really necessary because these are the things that should or can be done from within the vocabulary. Within the toolbox, you might want to change the speech. I'm going to go into speech by pressing this button here. And I've now got my voice set to Ivona Bryan. I can change the voice by going in and pressing change voice. Because I'm using the computer software, it won't allow me to choose a different voice. But you'll see the range of voices and you can simply choose another voice and test the speech. If you're happy with it, just select OK. Lastly, we're going to look at access. We can access this device in several different ways. What that means is by selecting it in several different ways is being able to do that by pressing access and selecting the method in which we want to do this. What we can do is I can choose my access method as touch. If I want to select touch, that means how I'm going to access the device here. I can select the what is called the acceptance time. The acceptance time is the time in which I need to press this button on screen. So if I have somebody who continually presses the screen, and is continually getting feedback, I can press acceptance time up and increase the time in which I need to press a button on screen. If you feel uncomfortable about using this, just contact Liberator on 01733 370 470 and somebody will help you to adjust this and talk you through it in more detail. For now, that's the basics of customization and introducing you to the Accent device. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at Liberator. Thanks for watching.